special thanks to all our patrons who support the show every single week. We couldn't do it without you. Head over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today for bonus content, exclusive happy hour live chats and more. Patrons, you help keep the run, eat, drink podcast going. And we're so grateful for you. Not a patron yet? Join us today at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. Help support the show by using our Amazon affiliate link. Anytime you shop on Amazon for running gear, food, beverages, or anything else the little gray trucks might bring your way. Just use runeatdrink.net slash Amazon anytime you shop. It costs nothing extra. It's only one extra click, and it helps us keep the lights on and the bandwidth flowing. Just go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon, and we thank you for your support. Hi, this is Cheryl from the Runcation Nation, and you're listening to the Run Eat Drink Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Dana, it's time for another runcation recap. And today, we welcome to the show a member of the Runcation Nation, Cheryl. How are you doing today, Cheryl? I'm good. Thanks for coming on the show and taking the time to recap a race with us. We are so excited to have you. And so, I say, and so is the not so live studio audience, right, guys? Before we get into the actual recap of the race weekend you have selected for the Runcation Nation, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you're drinking. I'm Cheryl. I live in Woodbridge, Virginia, which is a suburb of D.C. I am currently drinking a Aslan beer, which is a local company called Bring Sexy Back. India Pale Ale. Oh, it's an IPA. Mm -hmm. And it's also a Justin Timberlake reference. It is. Yes. Very nice. So it's a local. Have you been to this place or you just... I haven't been up there yet, but I keep meaning to go. Mm. In Alexandria, so it's not terribly far from me. So you're in Virginia. You're on the opposite side of what I know Because I was born in Salem, Virginia, and I lived in Roanoke and the Salem area until, I don't know, until we moved down here about, I was seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. So lots of mountains and closer to the Carolinas. Yeah. The more rural part. Yeah. Country. She's outside of DC. You were like country with a K. Thank you so much. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Love it. So Cheryl, you're a longtime member of the Runcation Nation. Tell everybody a little bit about how you got started running. Originally got started running back in 2009. I quit smoking in April and then picked up Couch to 5K program, I think in August or September. Mm -hmm. And then me and my friend, co-worker, we were doing the program together and we both decided to run our first 5k in February of 2010. 2010. So she started running right around the time we did. Yeah, right around the same time. I love that. (laughs) We were in different parts of the country, but we were doing it. And you were getting, you were abandoning smoking and getting healthy and making connections with friends and I, I can tell you that it, I decided to run to celebrate a, a weight loss milestone. And after I had surgery for a, a detached retina. So it is, yeah, it's so cool to think about the same time that was happening for us. You were taking steps to get healthier. And what was the first 5K you did? This is when I was still living in Seattle. So it was called oh. the Love Em or Leave em. 
So it was a Valentine's Day 5K. Ah, very <laughs> cool. Ah, and how do you like your beer that you're drinking there? That does it bring sexy back? Maybe after a few of them. <laughs> you can't. The more, the more you, you drink, the less. sexier. You get. Oh, I thought you were going to say the more you drink, the less you care. Well, that or, too. But maybe it's not as bitter as I would like for an IPA, but it's still pretty good. Oh, you're one of those hop heads. <laughs> Citrus or pine hops for you? Citrus. Citrus. Yes. She's our people. I could do that. She's our people. I could She's that. our people. It's all good. So you started running and then it was 5Ks. But when we connected with you, it was all ultra and trails. And is that more of what you do now? Has it evolved over time for you? It has. So when I moved to Virginia, the guy that I moved here for, (laughs) he was an experienced ultra and trail runner. And so he was the one that got me to go like the weekend after I moved here, we went and volunteered for a 50 mile race. And then I had already done an eight mile or an eight hour Mm -hmm. that the February before I moved here. And then just, yeah, just kind of got immersed in the trail community out here and that's where I'm happiest. I hear it's a, a cool community. Well, I was going to say, and is that food. kind of is that kind of what drew you and what kept you in the trail running side of things? Is the, the community because we've heard from you quite a lot actually, mm-hmm. and others about mm-hmm. how great the food is, how great the people are. What is it about trail running that kind of kept you on in that subculture of running? Well, I'm. A slower runner, I always have been, and trail running is just generally more laid back. So it fits fits me that way. And then, yeah, the community, it's it's less people-y, so it's less, like, competitive. Nobody cares about your time. They just are happy that you're out there, too. Very cool. Less people-y. I like that. I'm sure that there are times on the trail that you have, there are the moments of that there's beauty and solitude and it's, I'm sure it's very therapeutic and it sounds like we should do more of that. Yeah. I know we've talked about your background and how it evolved to where you are today. You're talking to us after a long run. How long was your long run today? Um, Ended up being 8.2. 8.2? A brisk 8.2. Yeah. Yeah, you might be preparing for an upcoming race, but what race weekend are you recapping for us today and why? The 17.75K. And that was the race that I did most recently. It's the first time I've gotten to do this race in person. And it's basically like almost in my backyard. So it's super convenient for me to do this race that for that reason, a lot of people travel for this one because it is a Marine Corps race event. Oh. For those that don't know, it's called the 1775K because the Marines were founded in 1775. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's how many miles is that? 11. Oh, great. Good. <laughs> okay. I can't. 5K, I get that. Six, like the it, 10K, I, know, I get the, that. The but first, if you get the first part. Yeah. That's 17.7. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost exactly 11. My father would be so ashamed. No. My anti math converting skills for mileage, but it's way. Remember, you could always shout out and ask the A lady or the S lady. Well, that's true. To do the conversions for you. That's true. (laughs) Then he would call me lazy. But (laughs) okay. So it's a Marine Corps race and you did it most recently. When is it normally held? In March. Okay, so it was, it's the early part of March, latter March? Uh, towards the end of March. Towards the end of March. Like and usually you, like the third week, the third Saturday of March. Okay, so it's like you're approaching St. Patrick's Day? hmm Yeah, so ooh, fun for St. Patrick's Day, right? And it's, okay, you said it's in your backyard, but a lot of people travel to it in your backyard at that time of year. What's the weather like? Virginia is very unpredictable. So it could be 80 degrees or like this year, it could be 40 and torrential downpour. That's what it was for you? That's what it was this year. But you've done this race. This is the first time you've done it in person, but you have seen it 
in all shades of weather, all types of weather. So, and I've done it virtually too. So you've probably done it in all kinds of different weather. <laughs> It's kind of like running in Florida anywhere oh. in February or March. Yeah. It's the same thing. It we, it's, might be sweltering hot. We may still be getting a little bit of winter. You just never know. You never know. Keep it. For a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yes. I <laughs> love like it. I love that this is a military race. Me too. We've done a couple and that we've always had fun, whether it was an in-person or virtual. Mm -hmm. But let, for those that now know PAC, bring a little bit of everything if you're thinking about traveling to this mm -hmm. one. Yes. Can we ask you a little bit about the registration process? If you've never been through it, what was that like? It was pretty simple. You just go to the, it's the Marine Corps website, I think is MCMO, Marine Corps Marathon Organization. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it is the same organization as, oh, yeah. Marine Corps Marathon. as the Marathon. Yeah. There's, well, three that, main, yeah. there's three main races here that are all put on by the Marine Corps Marathon, the 17.75K, mm -hmm. the Historic Half, and then the Marine Corps Marathon in 10K. What was the second one? Sorry. The Historic Half. Historic Half. I have never heard of that one. That one's in Fredericksburg. So a lot of people travel for that one, too, because it's another MCMO race. And, and I have doing that one as well. <laughs> oh, you've done that. You've done. I'm doing it this year. You're doing it this year. Okay. And you have you done all of the race weekends that you mentioned, you said? I will. Will have once this will is. Will have, yeah. Ah. Okay. Very like nice. A, like a we'll trifecta. trifecta. Exactly. Yeah. Right, do they, so Amy's pulled up the website. I'm so. sorry. Do they give you a, like a bonus medal if you do all three of them? If yes, there, I think they still do. It's called the Semper Fi Challenge. Nice. Okay. And then they also have another thing where if you do, I think there's a total of five separate races, you get a Distinguished Participant Medal. Knowing the Marines, at some point, they'll issue you a bayonet. You just got to be, be mindful. Why not? Yeah. I just, when you said it, I wanted to pull it up. And apparently, the Marine Corps Historic Half is 42 days away as we were recording this. Hey. Okay. But is there a lottery or we're talking about registration process and things like that? That was your question. So is it is it tough to get into this race that the 1775? Not since COVID. Okay. Uh, it used to be okay. you had to be like on your computer when registration opened because it would sell out super fast. But this year I didn't even register for it until the month before. Oh. And no problems. No problems. Wow. No problems. Okay. And did you need to have some kind of qualifying time or any? No, the hist or this race, I think their minimum pace requirement is a 20 minute mile. Oh, well, that's very forgiving. I like yeah, it. It's a very like generous. This. More and more. Okay. <laughs> How? Okay. So you don't need to have a certain pace. It's not a lottery. And it it's like a 20 minute mile okay okay how's the cost of registration all of the marine corps races are a little bit up there i don't remember for sure how much this one was i want to say it was i don't remember if it was over or under a hundred dollars oh. i'd have to look it up amy's looking it up as we yes. speak but <laughs> i know that they've got uh charitable organization attached to it. So I don't mind paying a little bit more to support right. a great cause. So that for me is A-OK. -okay. There's a discount for active duty military. Very nice. Ah, I'm the general public though. Thank you for your service. Yes. Yes. So it says it's not open. Now, typically, so. <laughs> I, I know that... <laughs> No. She's working. She'll be like, add to cart, add to cart. Of course, there's a turkey trot they have too. Yeah, but that one you probably it's a Marine Corps turkey trot. You probably have to go out in the woods and run after and catch a turkey. I Do mean, you? No, I'm kidding. But I'm bling driven. Of course. I know that the Marine Corps bling is awesome. Can you talk a little bit about the bling? Or is there bling for this race? And if so, yes, there is. How awesome is it? It's pretty awesome. So it's got yeah, it says the 17 or finisher 1775 on it. And then on the one side, it says it's got the hashtag one with the Marines. It's got the devil dog on it. Oops. 
and the MCMO logo. Oh, that's oh. fantastic. Oh. And then on the done other in relief, side, uh, like the metal looks like it looks like a slab of metal and it's done in relief for the devil dog. And on the back, it's oh, it's the it's the Marine, the Marine Honor Guard. The Marine. And it says once a Marine, always a Marine. And it's like a row of the officers in Honor Guard holding their rifles at a, uh, at attention. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that and this is, is one of their smaller sized medals. <laughs> it's yeah. smaller? Yeah. It's thick and heavy, but this is one of their smaller ones. Wow. It's beautiful, so, though. And, and yeah, they have really days. nice ones. That's an 11 miler medal. That's nice. Mm hmm. And then the back of it, could, if you could hold that up one more time, is that blue? The color? The kind of the color accent is blue. The ribbon? No, on the back of the medal where the soldiers are standing at attention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so blue. the blue background, and then you get the soldiers in the plain metal in relief on that field of blue. That is cool. really sharp. Wow. It's beautiful. Wow. Oh, that is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was, and that's like a perfect. And she just, again, for those listening to the to this episode, we are actually patrons are getting to enjoy the video version of this and see what we're talking about. It's beautiful, and she had she struck the perfect pose with the metal where it was kind Vanna of Whiting you, for us. It was like a portrait mode photo for a moment. I loved it. And listen, I think that and the pacing and the okay, oh, listen. The general yeah. public cost eighty three dollars. Okay, we've paid, what is under we, yeah, that's not bad, really. To, and then you can do the virtual. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh my god, it's I, I, is it the same metal for the virtual? Is that a, it is? Okay. It is. Yeah, I mail you the shirt in the metal. Mm. Oh, very nice. You get a do you get a bib doing it virtually like that you can wear when you do? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you don't cool. miss out on anything doing it virtually no. except for being there. No, they basically send you the same packet that you would get on packet pickup. They just mail it to you. Mm. I don't know if they mail out the metal before or after you submit your time. It used to be after, but I think now they just mail it. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So okay. was there something that, or, or is there... The $83 price is what I did. For, that's what she paid for the historic half. That's not bad. So the 1775, I just, I imagine it's very hard, similar, but it's I would not so. letting me go there. Because it's close. So, so, <laughs> so is there a cause, what, do you know what the cause attached to this race is? I'm not sure, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any information on that. I don't I'm sure know. sure it's on the it website. It mm -hmm. like goes back to like veterans or something like that. I'm, I'm sure it's a veteran, a veteran centric cause. Amy will have links in the show notes. Of so it doesn't more. stay on the shirt. Oh, and I see that you've got the shirt there. Can you I show do. us what that looks like too? Yeah. Nice and purple, cool. big devil dog in the, on the it's front. It's actually like a navy blue. Oh, Is navy. It? Okay. It looks purple on, on yeah. screen for us. So it's good. So it's navy blue. Love that. And then you have the dog and you can sit like seven. Like it's a cartoonish way. version yeah. of the bulldog. And, and then, then on it's the, back. The, the Marine Corps logo with the eagle, the anchor, the globe. That's great. And it's hashtag run with the Marines. Oh, and then the year. That's and gorgeous. That, it's a tech, it's a tech shirt. So uh -huh. it's cotton. And they switched to this company called Recover and they... I believe they make all of their things with recycled materials. Oh, that's nice. That is cool. Yeah. So it feels, it, so it's a texture and that must, is it like a thicker kind or is not, it? Not too thick. No. Lighter. Oh yeah. Gate River Run. Mm -hmm. What it look, looked like, like to that. me you could see through. So that's good. I'm thinking about Florida and the summer that's approaching. And the humidity. And, and not all tech shirts are created equal. It's not, Some of them are itchy yeah. and really thick. And don't have a lot of stretch to them. Yeah. This, oh, no, one, it's big. this one's good. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I, I like the look of that. <laughs> and did they have just one for both men and women? Or did they have a V-neck choice? Or did mm -hmm. they just had yeah. the one? Yeah. yeah. That's easy. No must, no fun. Nope. Huh. They do run a little big, so I wish I would have gotten a smaller size, but now I know. That's good to know. That's good to because know. things vary depending on the vendor mm -hmm. or a race. So I that's it it's it's perfect. Can I just I know I'm going a little bit out of order, but like virtually you don't miss a thing. 
except for the course. Mm -hmm. So did the course attract you to the race? Mm -hmm. Why? So last year I volunteered at a water stop on the course. So I got to just see the runners as they were coming through and give them their water and stuff. And that is one of my local like women's running groups that does that water stop every year. So I knew I had a bunch of friends to look forward to when I got to that water stop myself this year. But because it's a Marine Corps race, they have like Marine Marines on course at the start finish. Because it was raining this year, they had somebody like a Marine announcing at the start line and he was screaming out, if it ain't raining, we ain't raining. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, that does not surprise so they, they made it fun. And then when you get to the finish, their marine, a marine gives you your medal. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. I really want to ask the capital H question. The capital H question? Yeah. Can is it hilly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she hesitated and then she's like, yeah. I think it was hesitation because she didn't want to disappoint you, but. Oh, I was so hopeful. But For me, it wasn't super hilly. But so the race is in Prince William Forest Park, which is a like natural or national forest park, national park forest, <laughs> something like that. National forest. Is it? Yeah, national. Forest. national I don't know. It's a national park. It's a park. It's a forest. It's national. There yeah. we go. It's run we by the it. National Park Service. We got it. <laughs> it's all good. So the, there are trails in there, but this race is only the only trail is the fire road leading to and from the paved road. Okay. Okay. How long are you on that roughly? Ooh. Let's see for probably about two, two and a half miles each time. Oh. So it's about two and a half miles, and then you get to Scenic Drive, which is a paved road, and then you're on that. That's not too hilly. It's just kind of gentle rolling hills that aren't too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get back to the fire road for the two-ish miles. That's the hilliest part is that climb back up the fire road to the finish. Ah, uh, it gets your hopes up. Like you start out with the more, more downhill, and then on the way back, it just bam. Uh -huh. I was so excited. <laughs> there was like, I'm, oh, it's the time limit's great. The metal is great. The texture is great. Had to be something. Hills. So train for. Train for hills. At the end of a race. So did you do that when you were training for this? Did you prep for the hills? Do you normally prep for hills? We don't. <laughs> I do a lot of my trail training runs in that park. So I do the regular trail trails in there so i'm pretty much always training hills smart gotcha so smart oh my okay so you okay so you volunteered at a water stop so you knew you would be looking forward to that water stop which what uh, your your running group what mile was that i think water it was stop. around seven it was water stop three okay so it's been the middle of it mm -hmm. for you. No, okay. So then you have that whole back half that you've been motivated and you've seen all the friendly faces and things like. So it seems like the water stops that you said that's water stop number three. Mm -hmm. So that it seems like their water stops are spaced out and they're well stocked with volunteers and water. Mm -hmm. And well, noon. This one also had noon. Okay. I was going to ask some races or Gatorade races, some are Powerade, some are. It just, okay. So it's noon. Uh -huh. Yeah. MCMO has been using noon for a couple years now. Okay. And that brings me to the next part of the question is what do you typically do for your fuel and hydration uh, for a race like this? And, and what's your, what do you lean on? Mm. Um, my main fuel go-to these days is the you can edge energy gels it's two twice second time anna talked yeah. about this too two interviews in a row somebody's mentioned yeah. this. we haven't tried that yet and the untapped maple syrup gels Ooh. untapped this is that's new different so i like things that are more 
that are thinner, that are easy to just drink real quick, that aren't all gooey and sticky. And yeah, both of those are really easy to just mm. rip open, drink down real quick. And the untapped is natural because maple syrup. So, oh, but so it is know, actually like, maple syrup in a pack. Yeah. Yeah, they have a plain maple That's syrup, awesome. they have a raspberry maple syrup, they have a salted cocoa, which is one of my favorites. It tastes like melted, malted shake. And then they have a coffee one that's really good, too. They have a coffee one? Mm -hmm. So needless to say, there will be links in the show notes. Amy's on Sorry. the website right now. Like, Sorry. Like, great. I'm right there with you. I, I appreciate all the science that goes into some of these companies and they're developing their formulas for stuff. But some of them are so thick and so hard to swallow, especially if you don't, if you're not at a water stop. I try to always time my my fuel and hydration at the same time. But if you like need it stops, yeah. and you don't have water with you, it sucks not having something to chase it down because it's so, so many of them are just so thick and cloyingly sweet. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. We need to look. I think that Amy this. might be looking at seeing about getting some of this. So I'm very excited. Very nice. So <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. So is this, is this the type of race where you run in costume, or oh. do you see anything like that on the race? Or I, I don't. I do not want to equate military uniforms with costumes. No, that's not mm -hmm. it. No. But I have seen several races where police officers and firefighters run in full in gear. gear yeah. Um, yeah there are people running in full gear not really costumes in this one okay. um in the full marathon in october you'll see costumes because it's always so close to halloween ah uh, okay but this one not so much but i feel like maybe it's a different because it's the marine corps that hosts that that and because of the theme and I would think that the tenor or like the mood of the race is somewhat different than say, I don't know, like a Disney race is, would you, what is it? How is the mood and atmosphere among the runners and with the volunteers and everything as you run it? That's they have really great volunteers. Everybody's just super like excited. And then of course there's always the Marines at all the water stops. And so they're yelling at you and <laughs> making it fun. And <laughs> do they make you do burpees? No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just I'm just checking. I know you've got visions of the, the mile I'm marker at Disney where the, 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 green, the, Army the green Army man. man is there yelling at you. And then at the finish, there was a Dunkin' truck handing out free coffee. There you go. Was there coffee at the start? Not that I saw, but I could have just missed it. Mm. What time of day? Is it a really super early start? Is it a... It starts at 7 a.m. Oh, okay. So it's not crazy early, it's but it's just early enough to hit the sunrise. If they did it any earlier than that, then you would need a headlamp. But starting it at seven, mm -hmm. it's just light yeah. enough that you don't need a light. That makes sense. How is, let's just say, okay, so you, so registration we've talked about, but we didn't talk about the expo. I think I just got ahead of myself with the hills. I was, you, you, yes. I'm so sorry. Is there a race expo? There's not an expo. This year they did packet pickup at a brewery in Stafford. Nice. Which you I didn't know. get to try anything because I got there too early. So the brewery part itself wasn't open when I picked up my packet. <laughs> what brewery was it now? Do you recall? I No? We can come back to that. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I don't we'll have a link to that in the show notes also. <laughs> yes, I was just curious. I'm throwing in a question that I didn't. We didn't that I, for that one. I didn't send, but I was just, but I'm uh, discovering all these little nuggets as we're talking. So yeah, I feel like I'm is... so, I don't mean to throw them at you. <laughs> but I didn't study for that. I'm so excited about it, though. So but... let's just say for sake of argument, we're going to come in from out of town. We We are not from the area. What do you recommend in terms of, let's combine the question. Yeah. Lodging, great. Are there good places to stay in the area? And then transportation. Do I need to rent a car or can I Uber and Lyft? And, yeah. and what would you recommend? If you're flying in, then you would be coming into one of the DC airports. So either Dulles or Reagan. From there, you would probably, I think most people rent a car to drive south. The race is the race start is fairly close to Quantico. So there's 
lots of hotels like yeah. in Quantico or up where I am, which is only like 15 minutes more north. Um, we've got, you know, like extended stay and different things around here too. So all Perfect. of the all of the major ones, like if you're yeah, uh, Quantico's yeah. got a whole everything's grown up around the marine base there mm. and, and the FBI Academy there and all that. So they're nice. Yeah. So I imagine if you're renting a car, then you might be concerned about parking. As so well. they have designated parking lots. That's and awesome. They have a map for you, and then they have shuttles that take you right to the start finish. Oh, okay. So you park and then you shuttle mm -hmm. is basically how it is. Okay. Unless you're okay. local and you know a secret parking spot where you don't have to shuttle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you know a secret parking spot? I do. <laughs> but she's not going to say. say it because then it wouldn't be secret. Because then anymore. she would lose her edge. Exactly. Is what it is. We got you. Yeah. We got you. I get it. It's all it's right. On, where the start finishes is on a, like a running biking path that's on a main like highway. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of parking within walking distance and so they have there's like a church parking lot nearby so the shuttling to the start the parking lots that you shuttle from are within like five to ten miles it's not a long shuttle ride okay okay that's good but that's good they're, they're they're the big, that. nice tour or like greyhound type shuttle buses not like the school buses nice that's, that's, that's we've done school buses at i think at donna, donna yeah. in jacksonville and that is after i think the first year I'm just going to tell you, I was exhausted because I was totally unprepared for, again, a bridge, a hill. Okay. And, and I think the quality of the shuttle bus makes a difference because Absolutely. if you're after the race and like yeah. how, and the distance, not to know that's not too far. And do do I have it right when you were talking about the hills and, and is it um, an out and back or is it a point to point race? It's what... I would call it's a loop. It's like a lollipop loop. So the fire road is the only out and back. So you go down oh. the fire road and then you loop around back to that fire road. Gotcha. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. And you said it started at 7 a.m. How is, are, are there corrals once, once you get there? Is it? Line up. Can you talk about pre-race a little bit? Yeah. And then what's the, you said that you just line up. There's no no corrals. No, there's no corrals. It's timing chipped. And I think because it's in the park, there's limited numbers that they cap it at so many people. That's why it used to sell out so fast. Oh, okay. Um, so they don't have corrals for this one. Mm -hmm. Not really needed if, if you're chip timing, but it's a good idea nonetheless to judge your placement based on what your pace is going to be and at then, the very end and then don't I would. if you're like us if you're a back of the pack or don't get up front you're going to get run over and they probably use i don't know the race announcers and the organizers probably told you to line up that way mm -hmm. okay do they have a race announcer kind of work in the crowd in the morning and music mm -hmm. and all that like what's the pre-race like yeah they have an announcer that's and then of course they have the music and so when you're coming back up that fire road and you start to hear the music that kind of gives you that little extra burst of energy to get up that one last hill <laughs> and then go. as Thank you're you. coming up to the finish line if the announcer catches your bib number quick enough he'll announce you by name as you're going coming up to the finish that's cool i like that oh okay. yay and there's i don't know do they try and Make you do some drills or some pre-race. Let's do an obstacle course before. No, no. Okay, I was kidding. I was. <laughs> I figured no more. <laughs> but okay, so we've talked a little bit about the course. I asked the the dreaded question about the hills. I know I keep bringing that up, but I'm just. I, I thought it was going to be the perfect race, but no, there. It's okay. <clears throat> not quite i'm over it i'm over it so when you ran it this year it, was there a particular experience that kind of sticks with you uh, i know you said it was rant was it like raining cats and dogs was it yeah oh my god did you do a poncho or what how did you i had a rain resistant windbreaker type jacket that didn't make it for very long <laughs> <laughs> you're like come over it um but yeah, everybody just got really wet. <laughs> we have heard that 
uh, every now and then at the Marine Corps races, this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Intense rain. Who was it? It was Roxanne. Roxanne Baggett. Yes. Yes. And she's a patron of our show and a breast cancer survivor. And she's done Donna. We've encountered her on the course. And she's just, she showed us just, I think she just showed us pictures where she was just in the October race. Just, it was, and that was, she was in the marathon. That was the marathon. And I can't imagine. This is the, was it just the same cadence of rain for the entirety of the race? Not quite that bad. And being back like in the park, you were sheltered somewhat from the trees. The Mm -hmm. trees helped a little bit. I didn't even realize it was windy until I came up out of the park at the finish. So that was nice. So at least the wind wasn't beating on you while the rain was. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm, If it's the wind and the rain, that could be really tough. Mm -hmm. But I I knew what the weather was going to be. So I planned my race kit outfit whatever you want to call it accordingly to protect my feet especially oh (laughs) because at some point you just there's no point in trying to avoid the puddles right oh my gosh and like your feet are just you know there's a couple there's some things that you can do with gear but yeah heavy and soaked and you just can't yeah and you're probably freezing at the end of it (laughs) yeah yeah so it, it Along the course, you were dealing with the elements, but what was there any moment that a particular moment, something that happened that will really stick with you that was funny or inspirational or just meeting somebody? Was what was there a certain moment that you'll that you take with you? Just kind of the whole thing for the most part. Everybody is just cheering everybody on. The volunteers at all of the water stops were super motivating. They were out there standing still in that weather. So I think they had the much harder job. Good it's point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> like, uh, my friend was waiting for me at that water stop with a little bottle of fireball. So that helped warm me up a little bit. <laughs> medicinal, we've been told by a doctor. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A, a shot of fireball at a race is medically acceptable, as we've been told by Dr. Indeed. Sharp. Yeah. I mean, not enough sugar to be a gel. See? See, it's electrolytes. Now we're going to see all over the internet, it's going to be a thing. There's going to be like, there. The, they're going to fashion a gel. Somebody's going to Photoshop a fireball gel. <laughs> Just this, wait. This gel tastes like fireball. For us non-alcoholics, <laughs> we call that cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And by the way, Fireball, not a sponsor of the show, but they could be. They could be. Looking back on your experience for this race and and factoring in your weather situation, was this more of a physical challenge or a mental challenge? And in what way? For me, it was a little bit of both. I had decided since I'm not doing the marathon this year, that this would be my race to run in honor of my husband. So I had like a collage, like a picture collage that I laminated that I had pinned to the back of my shirt. That's fantastic. Um, And so a few people made comments on that. And that was really sweet and brought me to tears a couple of times. And I cried as soon as I crossed the finish line. And the photographer's there like, let me get your picture. (laughs) As I'm just crying. I was like, at least the rain is hiding it. (laughs) Wow. Laminating. Very, that was good. Very good. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. So smart. So I, uh, yeah, there's just, when you see what the weather is going to be like, but anyway, any, uh, yeah, just. And anything you're going to do like that. We've seen at the Donna, they have, yeah. they have the weatherproof Tyvek bibs, bibs and you write on you them can... and those don't run because they're using Sharpie, but I've seen yeah. people do similar type of memorial things and they'll do. I don't know if I've ever seen one laminated. I've seen people put them in plastic sleeves. Or maybe, yeah. But that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Very smart. Very smart. So, can it is the Run, Eat, Drink podcasts. Can we ask you, because it is in your backyard, when you cross the finish line, other than getting dry, changing, right? <laughs> I don't, did you get, do you gear check? I did, but I accidentally left my coat in the car, so I only had a t-shirt to change into. Oh, no. so I, 
I no. Do. Okay. Yeah. I like you're, are you the person that like, there are people that we know that are like, when I gear check, I'm getting like the UFO, the recovery slip flip flops or shoes. And, or do you just, all I need is like a, like maybe a shirt and I'm good to go. Yeah. It depends on the weather for this one. I had gear dropped a complete change of clothes so that I could get out of the wet stuff and into dry Smart. stuff as soon as possible. For sure. Do, that probably put a damper on the Oh, you just walking right into that post race party, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> they had a lot of like canopies up that people could duck under, escape. Yeah, with like chairs and stuff. So that was nice. Yeah. So was there anything at the post race that that caught your eye that you part that you had a chance to partake in, like some food or beverage that was fun or? Really? Thank goodness after 11 mile. <laughs> most of it was standard stuff you would get at the end of most road races, like the little, like the Nutrigrade bar. The one cool thing that they had is that they had a company there. It was like a local popcorn company and they were handing you boxes of fresh popcorn. Oh, so that was nice. That sounds good. Not too bad. That, I wasn't expecting that. And that's right there in the post race. Yeah, right. as you're I coming know. through from the finish line, like to go get your gear. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I've never, I don't think we've heard that. It might be the first time we've heard that. Yeah. Recovery that's popcorn. Cool. I love it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so let's talk about if, like, when you're done there. Yeah. If somebody are running this race and, and maybe you have an experience, some experience with this, where should somebody go in the area for a celebratory meal? What place and, it could be fancy. It could be not fancy. Whatever. What's a must hit place in that area for somebody? I guess it depends on if you're going for like a brunch or if you wait until later to have proper lunch. Okay. Um, there is a little like hole in the wall diner nearby. That's a greasy spoon, but it's pretty delicious. <laughs> Mm. And so that they do, they only are open, I think, until two. So it's like a breakfast and lunch place. And then up closer to me, we have a first watch, which is a breakfast and brunch place. We have the Bungalow Ale House. On weekends, they do brunch. And then they also have their regular like lunch and dinner menus. They have uh, local and all kinds of beers and ciders on tap. So that's a nice place to go. Amy's uh, looking up the website there. <laughs> the bungalow ale house. Okay. Okay. And then if you venture a little bit closer to where I live, there's the um, Stonebridge Shopping Center. And there's fancy restaurants, like a fancy Thai place. There's a Latin fusion place. There's a pizza place. There's a brewery that also has a, men a food menu. That is called Brew Republic. They have a smash burger there. There's a little bit of everything. Okay. Cool. So there's some good <laughs> options right nearby is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your go-to? My go-to for this time, I was carpooling with a friend and we were just in a hurry to get home because they didn't bring a change of clothes. So Ooh. we just ran into Panera and got breakfast real fast. <laughs> and a pinch, thing. not bad. This Panera is just down the street, so it was. It's right there. It's easy yeah. to get to you. But yeah, I like to go. I like to go to Brew Republic if I need to order food. It's one of my. It's always. It's been one of our go-to places for uh, quite a few years now. So. I like it. We're looking at the website right now. As yeah. a matter of fact, I'm so, so yeah. I got links in the show notes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the other favorite brewery that I recommend going to in the area, they don't serve food, but you can bring in any food that you want. Okay. Or DoorDash food to the brewery. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, they're, they're called Water's End. Water's End. Yeah. So they have a few locations and they have two, one in Woodbridge and one in Lake Ridge that are both close to me. Okay. Um, the Lake Ridge location does a food truck on Saturdays and live music on Fridays. Really good craft beer. They took, they have a pit. Okay. They have a picture on their website of their um, tap list. And the first one just says, damn beer. Like that. That's give the me a name. damn beer. That's the name of the I beer. I'm not it. trying to get a. But yeah, that is yeah. the name of the beer. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the name of the beer. Aha. I love it. That's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got distracted. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> so we got some good, we got some good local recommendations. Yeah. Now, do you out of curiosity, do you know the name of that greasy spoon? Oh. I do. She does. She does. And That's going to be the deep cut for everybody if they if, it is. if you're looking at going up for that one, I bet. I'm a big fan of the little Greasy Spoon family-owned mm-hmm. spots that just kill it. And there's nothing better to me than after a morning run, mm-hmm. getting a good brunch. Oh, yeah. Brunch style, big breakfast style stuff. Because I'll just do like massive, give me all the eggs. Mm-hmm. I, I want to do that line from uh, Parks and Rec. Oh, Give me all the bacon and eggs that you have. And then you have to stop them and no, say, no. you didn't understand I don't me. think you understood me. Everything. Yeah. All the things. <laughs> it's called the Montclair Family Restaurant. Ooh. Thank you. And we apologize in advance for the Montclair. If we send a bunch of people your way, do you get crushed on a, a, the next time there's a race weekend? But it'll be worth it. Yes. So, Cheryl, where are you accomplishing, exploring, and indulging next? What's next on your race calendar? Yeah. Next up for me is the Heiner Trail Challenge. I'm doing the 25K. 25K. That's 16. About 15, I was going to say it's 15 to 16 miles. Trail math isn't as exact as road math. Oh, but trails can be not forgiving. This is like, Pennsylvania trails, and it's going to be the hardest trail race I've ever done. <gasps> oh, and you said that without hesitation. <laughs> Why is it the it's, hardest? It's it, for the 25K, it's 4,000 feet of gain. Wow. Are um, you serious? My last 25K in the park where the 1775 was almost 2000. So it's going to be twice as hard as what I'm used to. <laughs> oh. But they That's... have cake tables. They what? They have cake tables. Cake table. Okay. Yep. For the non, for I know what this is, but for oh. the non uninitiated, for those that are not used to the food sitch yes. at trail runs, tell the, listeners what you're talking about there yeah. what's a cake table so, <laughs> i've only seen pictures because i haven't run this race myself yet but they have at one of the aid stations they had an entire like folding table with paper plates with pieces of cake yeah they so, literally like, an entire table up. full of slices of cake as part of the aid station yeah, the on-course support for the, some of these trail runs is absolutely out of this world. Fresh made food, cake. I've seen them with like breakfasts and pancakes and waffles and mm-hmm. just like they're like handing you all the carbs. And, and somebody actually posted a picture of a table that was just all liquor. I've seen that. I've seen all see- candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yes. uh, now apparently there is a bit of a drinking culture with a lot of the, the the trail runs also from what I've heard. Have you heard this, Cheryl? Just a little bit here and there. A little bit. Okay. Just checking. Mm-hmm. You don't have to if you're trail, not. Trail you runners are very much known to indulge in a mid-race fireballer beer. Yep. For <laughs> therapeutic purposes. Of course. Again, it's all about carbohydrates and blood flow. Pain relief. Do not listen to anything I'm saying as medical advice. I am a complete idiot and nothing I say should be taken seriously. Mm, Disclaimer. (laughs) We're not trained. Yeah. (laughs) Disclaimer. I don't know what I'm talking about. No idea. Disclaimer. So when is that? Oh, yes. When? That is in two weeks from yesterday. Coming. So you're in the taper now. You're, or do you even do that for trail running? That's a good question. Do you do a taper? It depends. If it's like my goal race, then yes. Mm -hmm. If it's just incorporated into my training, then not so much. I'll do a mini taper where I'll back off like the week ahead of time. So I have like fresher legs, but. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, I just. This has been. An amazing recap, just all the time. And I know that I just threw a bunch of questions in, in the, but she has given us 
recommendations for great food, Amy's great on the beverage. Yes. Right now. It's she it's it all about the race and you got to rent the car and then it's not crazy. And it just it seems like everybody should get, according to this recap, a, a Marine Corps race. And then I did the point. name of the other brewery where they oh. help pack it pick up. Oh, oh. So that's called Full Distance Brewing. Full Distance Brewing. Okay. I wonder, are they runners? Again, we're going to have all of this in the show notes. Um, we are... They were giving discounts. If you came in after the race with your race, babe, you got a discount. Oh, see, now that's awesome because I like places that kind of embrace when you have a race weekend and they embrace the runners and all that. That's great. That's yes. Awesome. Yeah, it's just like something off of your like your food or beverage or yeah and we've seen that we oh yeah yeah okay i got i got i got and the thing with virginia too if people don't know if they're traveling with their kids there's no real bars in virginia so you can bring your kids to all the breweries and there are several that we've been to in different parts of florida and that that kind of have that whole um family aspect we've been to some breweries that actually have a kid yeah. play area so it's engine 15 brewing yeah yeah. yeah they, water's and the, they'll put cornhole out if it's a nice yeah. day they're also very dog friendly so dogs are allowed in the brewery this is part of the reason we like breweries so much so. <laughs> dogs kids that's awesome fellow runners it's yes it all crosses and if people want to connect with you to find out more or because you have connected with running groups and you have a vast experience and knowledge as an ultra runner You're and kind of our trail ultra runner. runner subject matter expert yeah nation just so you know unofficially you are really you're so where can people connect with you uh, on Instagram, my Instagram handle is looks like walking. Okay. Which looks is like short walking. for looks like walking, feels like running. Oh, love it. We will also have a link, link to you in the show notes as well. We will. And Cheryl, we can't thank you enough for this race recap. And we have not actually run together in person, but you have supported our show for so many years yes and we can't wait to actually meet you in person and accomplish explore and indulge with you really soon same here that's a wrap so thank you for joining us on your long run your commute to work around the house wherever you are i'm your host amy and i'm your co-host dana stay safe and well and we will accomplish explore and indulge with you really soon Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.